Welcome to another episode of Captured by Women, the all-women host show that dissects issues from the perspectives of women. I am Nansata Yakubu, a development consultant, and I am here with my co-host. I am Elizabeth Olympio Emmanuel, a project management consultant and a restaurateur. I'm Amanda Clinton, a private legal pr practitioner. Now, here is a quick recap of our show last week. That's a question, President. And I don't want but to ask. And, 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 and the government Managing itself. our expectations yes. is going to be a big one for even the office. Yes. Because the expectations we all have is, you know, something yeah. really... Well, if it doesn't come out anything, that means that there's no corruption. If people oh. don't go and report cases... But we know that there's corruption. <laughs> so so, so we, he, has to come out, exactly. he has to come out with something. Yeah. And the expectations were raised by this, the government itself. Yeah. The cultural yeah. 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 But yeah. I, I so wanted to talk about the other side. Women I, I who have children that they give if away I, if I, and don't if I, if I, them. We've what about those times? So, no, they are still children. <laughs> if I, if I, so we have to pick this up quickly. at another. That okay, are, let's finish oh, with you. Well, no, this show is brought to you by GTP and Timashe in East Legon, Aqua. Coming up on Captured by Women this week, we look at the CID boss's comments on the whereabouts of the Takradi girls and then doing a double speak on only telling the families they know where they are because she just wanted to console them. Are we to believe her in the first instance or in the second instance? The National Communications Authority has shut down a number of radio stations for operating without valid authorization. It says its act and a landmark ruling by the Supreme Court in the famous Radio I case lent to their cause. But in an era of media plurality, where radio stations are considered an essential tool to giving effect to freedom of speech, is absolute closure the way to go? The spin is up next when we return from the break. Welcome back from the break. This is the spin. So, Liza and Amanda, we've had this issue of uh, the CID boss's comments about where the girls were, how they knew where the girls were, and then she's backtracked to report that she was only saying that to console the families or give hope to the families, and there's so much out there on to what level this is ethical, moral, is yeah. right. Well, well, how would you, you know, say you feel about this whole issue? I, I, am, I am woefully disappointed. We tackled this issue a few episodes ago, and my opinion hasn't changed. The police have failed us miserably. This is not an individual's responsibility. When she comes out to make those statements, it is the police because she's representing a body. This is our state security agency. This is, this is our bodyguard here. And you come out to say these things and it makes us lose confidence. We are already not very um, trusting yeah. of what statements they come out to say. And, and these girls have been missing since for the past, what? 10 months? Yes. Yeah. And counting. Yeah, and I think also as an investigation department, you know, the head of the CID is a highly respected woman, a highly decorated woman who has you know, gone through the ranks, mostly, um, in order to get to where she is. And so, you know, as women, we celebrate her because you know, she's such a high-level high level ranking um, individual. We also, perhaps, would have to add that, I mean, even for the Attorney General of Ghana to come, up, come out and say she takes exception um, to the CID head's comments about the girls and knowing their whereabouts means that even within government, you know, people don't understand why she must perhaps talk uh, yeah. to this extent exactly. because it is her position that she represents, it's not herself, and yeah. one has to have that sort of decorum. Yeah. So they, media they, sensitization yeah. training and perhaps public relations training, for instance, if you call the head of Interpol right now, if you're Joy News and you call the head of Interpol, because they told me, they've called him, 
he's got this standard line. You know, let me give you the number for the for the for the woman in, in, in our public relations team to contact. Yeah. So that all of government sort of sounds on the same hymn sheet about how they're going to address this issue and they don't say something that will put people's lives in danger. Yeah, and in, in addition, I would I would um, agree with you and say that it is not for nothing that we all don't work in intelligence. Yes. Or it is not for nothing that people are put in positions of power. Yes. The moral duty of that office does not give her the opportunity to be irresponsible, to give careless statements, and to give hope. It is not a religious I, fraternity. I, I think and that is let, let, I me just, let me just uh, yeah. try to finish. And it is not a religious fraternity because most of these things are based on strategy and information, and it impinges on the very lives of these girls if you come up to give such, that kind of uh, uh, information. Like because the investigation um, team, the CID, is going to be having a lot more, I would assume, high-profile cases um, coming up in future. And I think knowing the organ within such an organization to you know, give the party line or give the yeah. organization yeah. line we, we all of have what we strengths. stand by, because... It is unprecedented Speaking for the Attorney this, General to yeah. say she takes exception to, this, to, um, this happening. to, yeah. to the CID boss releasing information that we know where they exactly. are. She said she took exception every, and they never say that. Because Evidently. it's true. Yeah. Yeah. On Speaking so on is, all not, is not her so strength. So you can see the debate to continue in your own spaces as it would continue on here. At all levels, everybody thinks that the CID boss spoke out of 10, whether in the first case or in the second case. We think that the PR unit might be allowed to work. And while we go on debating, let the girls be found. This has been the spin on Captured by Women. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. I understand that Graphic Online, a public news website, has apologized for taking Mrs. Adodankwa's comments out of context. But beyond her comments and the apparent displeasure of the Attorney General herself with some of her comments, we find ourselves now in the midst of threats of a possible terrorist attack on Ghana and the apparent inability of our security agencies to resolve this scourge of kidnappings doing us no good. How do we make sense of what is happening around us? Joining us today on Captured by Women is Colonel Festus Abwaji Retired, the author of Ecomog and an expert on security issues. Colonel, you're welcome to Captured by Women. Thanks to all of you. It appears that I'd like to take you back to the kidnappings and the definition you gave earlier on. It appears there's been a sudden rise of kidnappings in Ghana. What do you make of this? Um, I've had occasion this morning, I think, or yesterday, to argue that the Ghanaian society is not being helped by the security institutions of this country, um, especially in terms of information about criminality within the country. So all of us, including academics and students and researchers and analysts, should have sources where they can go without any hindrances to find the data and then to subject the data to further analysis. Um, as far as the police is concerned, the available data which I have in front of me dates back to 2018. And I think the first uh, part of 2018 up to May. And the police agrees that over the years, there has been um, some upward trends some marginal, some you know, appreciable, in different categories of crime. The kidnappings is listed as one of them. There were 64 cases that were reported during the period that the police has provided the information. Um, some 23 of them were true cases of kidnapping. 28 uh, reported were abduction cases. Um, I don't quite. Technically, there's a difference between 
kidnapping and abduction. Abduction could be for cultural reasons and so on. Kidnapping has a bit more of, a, you know, criminality or use of violence or that kind of stuff. Um, seven involved persons or missing persons, and then six were categorically untrue. Then, of course, as usual, the number of prosecutions uh, doesn't match up uh, to the reported um, cases. So, with the role of the media, um, and then the capacity of the police to report um, kidnapping cases, have all given rise to this perception that kidnapping is on the increase. Um, but it hasn't been that quantum jump. Now, whether it's one kidnapping or two kidnapping cases uh, is not the issue here. So the cases of these three have helped you know, to highlight or to focus the attention of society on the security of society at large, but especially that of um, women. The, the bigger challenge also of how the conflict is mutating, if you look across the Sahel, they have always lived with some form mm. of these conflicts that are latent and never really get mm. yeah. But the triggers from Libya, as we, mm. we, uh, you said, that started happening. Now, riding on nationalist issues, in every country, you have different issues being the triggers. So if it crosses this way, we are thinking it's, it's now riding on ideas and norms. It doesn't really ride on we are uh, Salafist jihadists. And so if we are in Ghana, we are going this particular way as we went in Burkina Faso. So in Mali, for instance, we could say they were in, uh, they were in hotels and different places. In Burkina, they are in a different... So the, the, the general principle is if it's to cross this way, what are some of the norms, you know, nationalist norms that you think could thrive? You have understood your <clears throat> question well. See, the terrorists choose methods that are non-traditional in nature to achieve their objectives, which could be ideological, religious, economic, and so on and so forth. In the process, it's a bit difficult to say that, uh, as I said yesterday, that because they have attacked churches in Burkina Faso, churches in Ghana are going to be targets. They may very well choose, as we go forward, to be attacking mosques. Their whole objective is to use fear, you know, to intimidate society in order to be able to um, achieve, achieve their method. What we need to be worried about is any form of internal insecurity. So, for instance, the Fulani herders you know, conflict, if I should say. It's a source of terrorism. If they are pushed to the wall, they will have sympathies from the terrorist groups, yeah. which may want now to align with them, yeah. not necessarily to help the Fulanis, but to serve their own cause. Yeah. If we have instability in any part of this country, whether it is this so-called Western Togolan business, whether it is some conflict in some parts of the northern parts of this country. Some of those groups may find that it might be in their interest to ally with terrorist groups just to achieve their narrow objectives. So the terrorist may not necessarily be interested in Western Togoland or interested in Fulani herders, but they think that because the Fulani herders and Western Togoland and other sources of conflict have grievances they can exploit the grievances in order to serve their own purposes. Can, and that is a worry the, the Karen, that I have. Another worry, mm. the, another worry is we actually are seeing non-state actors mm. leading the discussions, leading the calls for some proactiveness on what is happening. So literally, we don't wait till it's on our doorstep. Mm. We, we seem not to be doing too much on counter-terrorism as... You know, as in, we don't kind of see the structures. Like, if you ask the average person where the counterterrorism unit is even located, it might be, or is it a new mm. place altogether, or is it? Do you think we 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 are able to do that kind of intelligence, like to say this is the counter, and it's not just to deploy people as usual to mm. station them at borders and, and and prevent this. 
See, the counterterrorism effort is a bit unlike conventional warfare, where the state depends absolutely on its armed forces. In the fight against terrorism, you need to layer the responses. So one layer is the top tier, which is the government, you know, which now needs to put in place certain structures and mechanisms to achieve its objective of protecting citizens within its boundaries. But the local community itself should be part of the effort. So at the local community level, that is where, and I share the views of Ghanaians, we don't seem to know that anything is happening at all. There is no sensitization. No. There is no education. As I was sitting at your lobby, I was trying to mentally appraise the security of TV3. I didn't see much. I saw these young ladies in uniform, and I was asking myself, if there is an attack in the form of a rush, I'm dressed up, uh, what are you coming for? I've been invited for a program. Then they use the mirror you know, to scan the belly of my vehicle, they allow me in. Who tells you that? That I'm coming for a program. So one of the concerns, yeah, one of the concerns that I have is that terrorists will study the characteristics of society and find the weaknesses and use the weaknesses to now serve their cause. But so in that getting sense... Back, getting back, sorry, getting mm. back to this point of um, what I was mentioning earlier, guerrilla warfare tactics, mm. you know, if your enemy is big, you're small, and if they're technological, then you use low tech, you know, that sort of thing. A US general was trying to describe this whole terrorism challenge, you know, for America, and he was trying to show how difficult it is. And he made sort of the analogy that, for instance... Um, when the other guy is willing to die yeah. for his cause, mm -hmm. no amount of Navy, SEAL training, yeah. nothing can counter the guy who is willing to die for any cause. And so once you've got this ideology of caliphate, which is like a roaming kingdom, you know, like anybody can take up the cause for themselves, and in their home decide how they're going to further the agenda of whichever ideology, then you've got a time bomb in terms of homegrown, um, the person takes it on for themselves, they, they are cr as creative as they want to come and you know, terrorize, and then you've got the guy who's willing to die for it. Mm. So how are our security experts possibly going to you know, deal with such a... Uh, you know, such a thing. Well, that, that modus operandum, that tactic or that drill or whatever we may wish to call it, uh, makes counterterrorism very challenging, very difficult. Yeah. But that wouldn't mean that we don't need to do anything. Yes. You may not have much time, but this idea of suicide, bombing and whatever, happened in the Second World War. Japanese soldiers were prepared to die for the emperor. So they were blowing themselves up with the allied forces. They instituted measures. Simply keep that distance. You see? So the whole idea is that because you don't know who is a terrorist and when he's going to attack you, you need to make sure that you have a perimeter uh, fence that stops, stops them from easily entering your facility. Well, what's the okay. Now, I'm just giving an analogy, yeah. for instance. So working from the borders, you try now to reinforce your security presence at the borders, porous as they are. You try to uh, sensitize, educate communities, including churches and mosques that if you find any strange activities, any strange individual in and around your place, you're not sure of who they are, yeah. this the is danger, the number to the call. The danger with that is mm. that in the US, for instance, they had a new sort of demon to deal with in terms of these were US citizens that had mm. been radicalized mm. On, mm. On, on the internet and were carrying out mm. these acts. And we, so, are, we also have a bigger challenge even in Africa with the morals there's a terrorist in the mall. I think 
the response, as you said, communicating so people would know. At a crown mall, if you leave a bag, I'm sure you are, you are going to have it picked up by mm. thieves rather than security announcing that there's a bag left unattended and this should be picked up. So mm. those are the kind of things we need to know whether we can start that kind of sensitization. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the things that matter. Yeah. That's things precisely that matter. what I'm trying to suggest. Yeah. That rather than wait until terrorism or we are you know, neck deep in terrorism. We can learn best practices. Yes, you mentioned Kenya, but visit Kenya today. Yes. In any case, I was there for four years, yes. and I miss Westgate more by only a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Go to Kenya today, and you see the layers of security around malls, mm -hmm. and within the malls, yeah. you have uniformed police armed, so perambulating. Much, yeah. Then you have plain clothes security, also present. Go to Kenya, uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. It's not like here. Is what I mean. S more than one kilometer before you get to the airport premise, you need to stop, disembark, go through a scanner, vehicle approaches the gate, driver gets out, boot open, that oh, kind of stuff, yes, engine off, that, restart, yeah. before yeah. you rejoin at the other side. Now, when you park, before you enter the check-in lounge, you need to scan your bags. Here, you enter and go deep to wrap your luggage, come back to the check-in counter, and when you've done all of that, and you've gone through immigration before yeah. your luggage is scanned. You, you see the, exactly. the, the, the whole losses, uh, conceptual losses, approach. Yeah, no? yeah. Um, the final question. The West African Security Agent states, do we have any level of cooperation or coordination between the West African states, for instance? West Africa. Yeah, oh, yes. We do. Um, in different ways. For instance, the West African Regional Organization of Interpol right. gives us one form of collaboration. Mm. Then we have regional integration ministries that also collaborate. Then we have an ECOWAS arrangement of monitoring zones, you know, about four zones. Ghana belongs to one of them, where information is gathered and shared and so on. So a lot is going on. But the sensitization at the local level, at the individual level, is what I think we need to gear up. Viewers, our security agencies are doing some work, a lot of work in the background. We may not see it, but they must sensitize us a lot more. Colonel Fester Zabwaji, thank you so much for coming on Captured by Women. Thanks to all of you. We will thanks be back. for releasing me from the capture. <laughs> we'll be back shortly after the break. So four radio stations have been taken off air so far by the NCA, with 30 more to go soon. Why is this happening? This is coming up next on Captured by Women. Welcome back from the break. While some describe the actions of the NCA as long overdue and even a necessary sanitization of the airways, whatever that means, others see it as being high-handed, ill-conceived, a cake, and a subterfuge of people's voice. But what was a better alternative to closure? Joining us today on Captured by Women is the Honorable Deputy Minister for Communication, Honorable Nanyi George Ander, and Member of Parliament for Ewutu Senior West. Nanyi, you're welcome to Captured by Women. Thank you. Good day. Good day to all your co-hosts, cool right? <laughs> That's correct. Oh, hostess is right. <laughs> thanks, now, thanks for having me here. Thanks for coming. Now, why is there a need for authorization of radio stations? Let's okay. start with the basics. Okay, so um, some radio stations operate on what we call the national spectrum. Um, that's what gives them the frequency uh, with which they used to broadcast. Now, the national spectrum is a national asset. It's used for a number of things. It's used for the mobile network operators use it for voice, they use it for data, um, TV stations for digital transmission would use uh, national spectrum. Um, radio stations would use it, use it as well. And so the National Communications Authority have a responsibility on how to manage the use of this national spectrum. Okay. 
So for any station that wants to broadcast and wants to use the national spectrum as a medium to which they broadcast, they have what we call an authorization. They don't require a license. It's an authorization for you to use the broadcast. And it's normally for a period of five years. Um, and you have to renew it before your authorization expires if you intend to continue. Great. Um, um, honorable, let's get the conspiracies out of the way so we can have a, a much more informed. You know what the conspiracies are. That the stations that have been closed are your opposition stations. Well, I mean, that, I think that's, that's a figment of people's imagination. I mean, just when I was coming here this evening, I, I got a call from the MP for um, Dunkwal. And he said the radio station that he has been working with, I think it's called Sunshine Radio, has just been closed down. And that is the only MPP station in his area. So it's not, it's not a matter of political coloration. It's an exercise that has been done um, to drive the efficient use of spectrum because spectrum is a national asset. Exactly. It's, 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 it's an asset that can generate revenue for the country. It's an asset that when it's abused, it has security implications. And so basically what the NCA is doing is implementing the law. And we're saying that we want strong institutions, institutions that work. And that's exactly what what the NCA is doing with the direction of the Honorable Minister of Communication. So there's, no, there's nothing about this being colored by one political party or the other. Yeah. Just as you say that, um, Honorable, sorry to interject, but for instance, Radio Gold's license or um, authorization expired in 2000. Nothing was necessarily done. Um, all of a sudden, this is the year that they're being shut down and people would argue you know, a letter, letters weren't even sent. And then they can't pay a fine just to get back on air. They have to literally, you know, go back to scratch per se. So some would argue, if these people's license have been expired since 2000, and some radio stations are asked to pay upwards of 61 million Ghana CDs, mm -hmm. which is worth more than the building itself, and probably the people and everybody else in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I mean, is this a bit like a, a sledgehammer much, to a How much nut? time do you have for me? Because I can take you through, <laughs> Please take through, us through, this. through the whole chronology of the events. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if I was supposed to summarize, again, you make reference to a license, and I've said that it's, it's, not, it's, an authorization. it's not a license I corrected that myself. is required. It's, yeah. a license, it's an authorization yeah. that is required. So... You being a lawyer, if you're saying that Radio Gold, Radio Gold's authorization expired in 2005, in as much as you blame... 2000, the actually. In, in yeah. 2000, in yeah. as much as you blame or you can blame the entity of the National Communications Authority for not doing anything, I think that it's fair for you to also, also find out how a responsible media house um, can be operating in Ghana using National Spectrum and not going through the right process because but the can, timing, can the I, timing I, is can what I, I want to Can say. I please take your time? Okay. I listen to you this, and I ask how much time do you have because I want to explain things to you so you can all understand. One, one okay. point to help this uh, explanation. What's the difference between a license and an authorization? Well, you see, um, um, you, uh, in your synopsis or in your introduction, you yes. did mention that there was a case where uh, Radio Gold took the National Communications Authority to court. Radio uh, I. Radio, I mean, Radio, yeah, sorry, Radio I, I, I yes. um, took the National Communications to court. And the ruling there was that because of press freedom, you did not need a license to operate a radio station. So, for example, if, if, I, form, if I create an internet radio station and I decide to use YouTube okay, to broadcast my content, I do not need anything from the NCA. I mean, okay. I can still go ahead. If I, if I want to use social media to broadcast my content, I do not need any authorization from the NCA. But insofar as I'm using national spectrum, mm -hmm. that is why I require authorization from the NCA. So Radio Gold's authorization, like you said, rightly said, so expired in 2000. They got their first authorization in, in uh, 1995 and it expired in 2000. Between 2000 and 2017, there were a series of correspondence between NCA and Radio Gold. 
bottom line is Radio Gold did not pay for the authorization. And at that time, the understanding was that when your authorization expires, um, there's actually a penalty in the law that says that for every day that you operate when your authorization expires, you pay a fine of 10,000 CDs. And so those figures that you are talking about were figures that were calculated based on the number of days that the, the, the various radio stations had been in default okay. for operating without, without authorization. No one can afford 61 now, million, well, that's well, fine. Well, no you, you see, the thing is that to, to the, 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 and, and you are a lawyer, you are, yes. the, the, the idea is not to let people go in default. Yes. and then pay the penalty, yes. okay? The whole idea is to get people to do the responsible thing to so pay authorization. So I think that authorization would probably be, let's say like 5,000 Ghana cities, yes. okay? And failure to do your authorization, you pay a fine of 10,000 so, Ghana so, cities so, a day. Now that we are here, yes. with no, can I, can 61 I finish? million, what would we no, do with no, it? No, yeah, let me explain, so let me explain. So these fines were imposed on the radio stations. The, Minister of Communication subsequently came and then slashed the fines to 50%. I mean, based on a lot of discussions, a lot of concerns that we raised. So the minister gave a 50% amnesty. $8 million and not $16 million. We're talking Ghana cities. But in terms of, for our viewers who can just I, want to have I? a concept of how much money is involved. Well, we don't talk dollars, <laughs> we talk cities. Well, okay, yeah. we talk Ghana cities. Okay, so the, the, the fines were slashed down to 50%. Yeah. Which is still steep. I, I, you could have an argument, but you, you see, I guess if, you wait, if, you, if you wait for me to get to the <laughs> okay. end of the case, you would know what kind of <laughs> no, questions to ask. To yes, but you need to be patient know, but to as, understand. As we ask questions in order so, to move on the conversation, that's fine. So, um, the minister... Brought, I mean, she gave this 50% amnesty, which they still didn't comply with. It wasn't only Radio Gold, there were a number of stations. Now, in 2017, um, there were a series of correspondences between the management of Radio Gold and the NCA, where NCA had cautioned them that they were operating without valid authorization. And so, for the period of 2017, I mean, uh, NCA quashed, they quashed all the other years and then they looked at, 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 the, at the year in operation and then they gave um, a 3.6 million Ghana cities fine because for okay. 365 days, 10,000 failing to have authorization. So that was a fine for the day. Mm -hmm. The lawyers of Radio Gold wrote that they were not in agreement on the fine and that um, they didn't believe that they were operating without authorization. Now, um, what then happened was that the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association then filed a case against the NCA and the Ministry of Communications on behalf of eight radio stations, including Radio Gold, with the Electronic Communications Tribunal. Now, among the reliefs that they sought was that the, NCA, the Electronic Communications Tribunal was to rule in their favor that the NCA didn't have the legal mandate to to impose these fines on them and that they, were, they should be allowed to operate. Now, the ruling of the Electronic Communications Tribunal came out in June 2018. And there are two, two important parts of this ruling. I'm, I'm sure lawyer Amanda would, would have read that, that ruling. The first one was that the Electronic Communications Tribunal said that if NCA allows a radio station to have its authorization expire. Once the authorization has expired, that radio station is not under your jurisdiction. So there's nothing like imposing a fine on that radio station, okay? So that is clear. And so it quashed all those fines that the NCA had imposed on the radio stations. Then they said that if, you're, if, if there are two things, if your, your authorization is about to expire, you have a window of six months to the expiry, expiration of the authorization for you to renew. Now, if you write to the NCA and the NCA doesn't respond to you, you can consider that automatically your authorization has been renewed. So you cannot be frustrated because within the six months period to the expiration of your 
of your authorization. You have done what the law requires, that you have made an effort to renew the authorization. However, if you wait for your authorization to expire, okay, then there's nothing like renewing your authorization. It is a fresh application that you need to put in. Okay? So it is like, it is like your, your driver's license expires. Okay? Let's say that if the rules for obtaining a driver's license are that six months or three months to your driver's license expiring, you go and you go and get a renewal. So if you take, the, you take advantage of that window during that time, mm -hmm. you can get a, your license renewed, your driver's license yeah. renewed. But if you wait for the license to expire, there's nothing like renewal, renewal because Yamatu is gone. Yamutu. Uh, okay, on the Yamutu. 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 What okay. I'm saying is the now that is we are law. here, yes. now that we are here, yes. and this uh, current, and you've, you've said, so if, if there's the need to reapply, yes. because the law needs to take its course, yes. when you reapply, are you reapplying for the same name, same frequency? Or it is assumed you might not even get the same name, same frequency. What? Is that what? And then would the reapplication mean that you will still pay some outstanding, you no. know, money or you you start a fresh? So it's, no. it's, it's it's kind of written off as like a bad said, debt. The and then ruling you, you of the Electronic Communications Tribunal said that if NCA allows the radio station to um, have expiration or have authorization that expires, exactly. you cannot find them. You understand. So once the authorization has expired, you shut them down. No, it is like a station that is operating illegally. It's a pirate station, so you have to stop them from operating. You can, there's nothing like a fine right. in that in that situation. Okay. However, to your mm. question, since June 2018, if they had applied for a renewal, probably by this time they'd have gotten their renewal. NC has waited July, August. September, October, year. November, year. December, January, February, March, April, 10 months. And you are still saying that NCA is being, what, uh, is being unfair? So do you okay. think that during this period of the 10 months, did NCA remind them in Why should NCA remind them? It's your duty. Why? Because you took us to court. Look, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. You took us to court. Yeah. The court ruled in your favor in one of them. You have the ruling. Okay, in one, the other one, the court, in the other uh, rule, it was the same ruling, but one side was, was favoring you. You didn't pay the fines. Kusha. Okay, the other one says that go and renew authorization. So the, pub the public is wrong in, or some of the public is wrong in suggesting that there might be a strategic motive in which stations get why closed you, and which stations... Well, no, it's just a question. Listen, listen, is the started, public wrong? You, some, you asked this question earlier on. I told yeah. you that just when I was coming, mm -hmm. I had yeah, a NPP member station, of parliament, yeah. okay, who stood on the ticket of the NPP, mm -hmm. call me to say that the NC had just shut down a radio station that he had been, he had been supporting. In his constituency, and that was the only radio station that operated for the party in the constituency. Okay, so it's <laughs> not strategic can... at all. But uh, why are it's you? A why are you? You've asked this question three times. I've answered you three times. Okay. Why ask, do you keep on going that way? Okay, it's just a, in okay. the press, talk, it's in the talk, media because people are saying talk perhaps about this is talk a about the radio move. stations that have been irresponsible. Okay, okay. okay. talk about the radio stations that perhaps are operating without authorization. If I, if I may, Chrissy Pratt, he's a renowned journalist. He's in the media saying that giving authorization to stations is an archaic practice. Now, is this practice of giving authorization to, um, authorizations to radio stations on the national spectrum in comparison to other countries, is this done similarly elsewhere? Of course, it's done everywhere. Okay. It's so done everywhere. Calls are not justified then. They're, they're not justified. Well, I, mean, it's not I, haven't, I haven't had him say that. Yes, the free, and, what's the name of that? The free if, media if, if, he has, if he has another suggestion, Okay, I think that he can table it, and then okay. it would be con it could be considered. considered. Okay, and and for those people that believe that the law is a cake, there's a process. You have a member of parliament. He can he can go through the process to have that law changed. Okay, you don't we don't sit on media and challenge a law that is in existence. Yeah. But Onabo, what, what what do you think your assessment would be of how we have slipped down? And uh, you know this. Uh, Reporters Without Borders uh, rankings. Mm -hmm. People are saying by closing down media st uh, radio stations, you are closing out spaces for policy, for dialogue, and in leading up to the elections. And just as we had uh, a fallout from, you know, we, we are not seen as 
being a very free media as much as we would have. When we were first in Africa, we've slipped down for four well, four from I, the last. I, but I, do you think this is not going to impact I, impact I, our standards I, in the I, next round of? Uh, I I of told media you groupings. that the fact that they don't have authorization doesn't mean they cannot broadcast. Okay. The only thing is that you cannot broadcast using the, the national, national spectrum. spectrum. Okay. So you can go and broadcast on YouTube. You can go and put your things on That's iTunes. True. You can go and do what you can go, go to Facebook. Any, any Facebook or, 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 or whatever it is that you want. Okay? But you cannot do that on National Spectrum because you don't have authorization. Now, to your question, I mean, we all know some of the reasons that have led to this decline in Ghana's ratings as far as security and freedom of freedom of the press of the press is concerned. This has nothing to do with it. Okay, this is about about enforcing the law. Okay? And and with all due respect, since June twenty eighteen. So if they apply now, would they be granted the license, the authorization? Well, it's a procedure. How I don't, long I don't, does the, how long does it take? I don't I don't work process? with the N C A. Okay. okay <laughs> but instead of them going around with press conferences and stuff like that. Just do the needful and get yeah, the application yeah, in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you see, the, the, the confusion out there is that some of them applied for renewal. Yes. Okay? And they were saying that they have put in their request for renewal. Yes. And NCA hasn't processed it. Two years ago. Yeah. They but, applied yeah. two years ago and yeah, it was you, not attended you to. Cannot, you, can, you cannot apply say that you want a renewal when, you when what you want when what you what you want is a fresh authorization well in all fairness when businesses operate and they are already in operations no. and there's every year no i mean no, in, no, i mean no, the no. hospitality industry yes and your license expires no, they give 12 not, months we are not talking about license authorization we are talking about authorization in, in effect it's to allow that, you to operate saying, no no you an authorization for, gives you there's a period Yes. For your expiration, licenses that you are, are also no, operational. No, I'm not. I don't do with licenses. Also, so let's let's take I mean, out authorization. authorization. Yes. Authorizations are time bound. There's a period before your authorization expired. Yes. Or expires that you are allowed to renew your authorization. Once that period elapses, there's nothing like renewing the authorization. It is a fresh. It is a fresh application. Like a passport. But what if well, passport? You can renew your passport. No, but once it but, passes, but the once it passes, the, it's if, it, done. if it is ten years, yes, okay, you finished. cannot go and go and say that you want to renew it's after the ten years has expired. Yeah. Just playing devil's advocate a little. You like the devil. <laughs> I like playing <laughs> devil's advocate a little. You know, like this two-year wait that you that were talking thing, about. Yes. For instance, I mean, is it a form of control though? Because there what is this wait? expression, two what year wait, they, they yes, applied so two years ago for the authorization that hasn't been granted the, yet. The documentation was not processed as yet. The, yes, the documentation at, at the NCA. Had yes, the authorization expired? We wouldn't know. The wouldn't authorization, know. I told you that the authorization expired in 2000. Okay, but so, if the so this question, expired, this question. Can, can they be asked to rather bring a new application? Yeah, but that's what that's they what should do. Yeah. But if you, bring, question, if you reapply, will you get the same same frequency, I'm same not, name? That's yeah, what we need to know so that you don't go and get some other name. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me answer your question. Let me answer your question. Can you get the same name? Let me answer your question. I am not God. Okay? There are a number of people that have applied for authorization. They can appeal for the name. Okay. Yeah. There are a number of people that have applied for authorization. If at the time that the NCA board sits to approve those authorizations and the next uh, frequency available is what you are using, so be it. Right. If it's somebody else that gets that frequency, so be it. That is what the law is saying. Okay. Honorable, can I ask this question? My okay. name is Nenyi or George. Yes, please. Nenyi. <laughs> Me. But your position is here, you know? I'm not here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yes, please talk. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, this, just as a question, a controlled media, for whatever reason, can be counted as the death of independent media practice. Do you think that a controlled media, for whatever reason, is like the death of so independent what, what media? What is your definition of a controlled media? Well, again, like I'm saying, for instance, if... People's, act people's actions are frustrated in terms of, you've said that the fines were reduced to nothing and so they just had to reapply. And then they go to the beginning and it takes like more than two years for the process to be done. Who you know, are, who are, is who it are, a little who, frustrating? Who has applied for fresh license that has taken a person two years? We just said yes. that Radio Gold did. 
Yeah. Radio Gold has not applied for a fresh license. They have they applied for renewal. For a renewal. Okay. okay, none of those stations that are complaining has applied for a fresh license. Okay, so for, for in applying for renewal, you're saying that they can't. They, you just have to. Can they apply for renewal? No. Are when they allowed to? Expired? Yes. Expired. They can't. It's not me. You you are the lawyer. No, no, no. But this is not my <laughs> area of expertise. <laughs> well, it's the law. It's the law. So the point is. The law is the law. So the point is. They literally have to go from scratch in terms of they're just reapplying for authorization. Yes. Is that the point? No, they have to apply for fresh authorization. They have to apply for fresh, fresh authorization. It's not a regular thing. But would you agree with the, with the expression <laughs> that the controlled media, that guaranteed. the media should never be controlled, apart from the legal aspect of making sure you get your authorization? Well, I agree that it's, it's, it's improper to control the media, but that doesn't mean that the media should be responsible. Is okay, you cannot you, you cannot be <laughs> allowing media stations um, or broadcasting houses to just operate without authorization. It's like it's like they're pirating and they're using a national asset. Okay, we need to be responsible on how we manage our national assets effectively. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Lee. Most welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule. Thank you. Thanks we for having me. We are very honoured to have had you here. I hope that you've understood it. And, and very you are, clear. You, 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 clear. You are, you are not going to be telling people that we are closing down radio stations. <laughs> This has been captured by women. We've been talking about the NCA and the radio shutdowns. We've had as our distinguished guests, Honorable Nani George Ander, Deputy Minister for Communication. We'll be back from the break. So ladies, what has been your highlights for today? Today's very interesting discussions. Mm. For have. me, learning about licenses and authorizations, the radio stations, and these are things that slip ups that happen in our normal day to day operations of our businesses. We don't take some of these compliance issues seriously and we let it slip by. And the law is the law, it will come to bite. Unfortunately, that is what it is. So we need to, when we delegate, uh, things to be done, make sure people we, who we have employed to do the work are doing their work because 61 million, well, it was trashed. It was, it was zero. <laughs> what stopped them from getting... But that's his getting, perspective. <laughs> Maybe if we had the other no. guy sitting here, he would have no, said something No, no, no. It was, it was crap. <laughs> what stopped them from renewing their license from June 2018 to May 2019? Mm -hmm. That's almost a year. Mm -hmm. Come on. We have laws and we want our laws to work. Unfortunately, this is a harsh one, but... Yeah. Let's see if negotiation, dialogue, and petitioning can get it back on the table. Um, I also really uh, very much enjoyed the discussion about medium freedom and regulations. You know, there's a fine line between media freedom and, you know, radio stations knowing that they have a responsibility to perhaps, you know, be regulated. Um, but also in that context, you know, controlling the media can be done in a very sort of subtle and sophisticated way. And so Ghanaians are watching. We have gone down on the rankings in terms of media freedom. We have to watch why and we have to make sure that although, you know, radio stations have to keep within regulations, we don't use this as a tool to shut down, you know, radio stations from one party and then dress it up in you know, while well, they didn't have yeah. the, the, the me, quizzes. I think my, my highlight has been uh, the comprehensive nature of the discussions on West Africa's security and how sequencing and trends from Niger, Mali, Burkina can impact on Ghana or not. And the whole basis for the ideology fallout right from Libya to what we are experiencing now. And he actually also took, took time to explain that the spits of crime in Ghana as attuned to kidnappings doesn't necessarily mean that they will impact terror or counter-terrorism activities and that we do have a process and a strategy for counter-terrorism in Ghana and that it's working and people are on high alert and the security agencies are out there to protect us so we should kind of remain calm and not you know speculate too much and and say all these things so I think that today it's been quite a lengthy one but it's yes. been also been good oh, so very interesting show. viewers this is the end of another episode. You can join us again next week, same time, on Captured by Women on TV3 Ghana.